All right, we are live. Welcome to Two Old Pucks Hockey Chat with Scott and Chris. Um, we have uh, some good items to cover this evening, but um, welcome everyone. For those who are live on Periscope, welcome. And anyone who uh, has any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to um, just jump right in, and we'll try to address as many uh, as many comments as possible. All right, Scotty, do you want to start with something? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's kind of a, uh, a trend, uh, and uh, tonight's been an interesting, or today's been an interesting day of news. So um, uh, going back to um, uh, the firings, you know, and, and disciplinary actions of uh, uh, against coaches and players, and things like that. Um, so we have a continuation to the uh, Akeem Alou uh, story. Uh, and um, it came out today that an ECHL team, uh, the Colorado Eagles, uh, mm -hmm. had a trainer uh, whose name was uh, brought up by Akeem. And uh, he, uh, he was fired uh, for uh, dressing in blackface back in 2011 at a Halloween party. <laughs> and so um, I, I find it, you know, I find it a little interesting. Uh, you know, obviously there are, there's a time and place for everything. Uh, you know, I have my own feelings on, you know, w what's considered racist, what's considered insensitive, right. um, you know, and I think it's all about context. And obviously we aren't around or we weren't around back in 2011 to be at the party. Uh, right. We don't know if it was, you know, good nature or whatever. Um, you know, there's a lot of social justice uh, in, in our culture today. Uh, some spot on, you know, right there, good others, uh, not so much. And, uh, so some people, it's just, you know, their feelings are hurt or their feelings are hurt on behalf of others whose feelings might not be hurt. Um, but, you know, I think it's all about context. And so, you know, it kind of leads into a discussion we had a couple weeks ago where, you know, at what point, uh, are these reports, where's the line going to be drawn for who gets attention, who gets, uh, challenged uh, on their behavior. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, having not been there, having not known the context, was it innocent fun? Was it, you know, what, what was it? Um, and, and now uh, here we are eight years later, um, it just comes out and this guy is now out of a job. He's out of a job. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, you know, these things shouldn't be investigated, but at some point in time, I mean, you know, you have a guy who uh, is not in the league. Um, you know, he really wasn't around. He was around for a cup of coffee. Uh, and now he's just ruined someone else's life um, for something that quite honestly, uh, you know, you kind of got a question, was it an opportunity to be the bigger man? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not him. Um, I know it's a sensitive subject, but do, do, do me a favor. And and the story is relatively new to myself, and and I apologize for not being totally up up to speed with it. Yep. Exactly who accused exactly who of this? So Akimalu spoke with Gary Bettman, uh, and during this this conversation, uh, uh, the trainer uh, Tony. Uh, I believe it's Danzer. I believe uh, I'm uh, D E Y N Z E R. Mm -hmm. uh, his name came up. And so action was taken. Um, they are the ECHL affiliate of the Colorado Avalanche. Against the so, trainer? Against the trainer. Yes. He spoke against the trainer. Okay. Um, and the, the story goes I mean, I, you know, we can dive a little bit. The, the trainer's costume was supposed to be Alu himself. Like, the guy was dressing up as the player. Um, he the, the player was new. You know, uh, it was supposed to be a prank. Um, you, you know, so yeah. it's just it's just one of those things, right? Like, what what's the context? And and that's really to me what it boils right. down to is what's the context? And um, we weren't there, but if the context was, and how was it received at the time? Right. I mean, was he there laughing at it or, or, you know, what, what could it have been? You know, like, like, is it all of a sudden now there's, there's this anger? I don't know. And again, I'm not trying to downplay the situation because everybody is, 
it's a sensitive subject, right? But I think somebody has to say. But uh, okay. but it's a sensitive, like just just in how we're phrasing that as a sensitive yeah. subject. Yeah. It's sensitive only because we're being told it's sensitive. Yeah. Right. Right. People can either be completely accepting of everyone, or they can be completely sensitive to everything. True. Yep. If we're completely accepting then we everyone can express themselves freely everyone can appreciate what everyone has to offer everyone can share if everyone's sensitive all that goes away everyone has to zip their mouths yep no one can say boo you can't say this to this person can't say that to that person they might be offended they might be offended they may be sensitive to this they can come after you for that which is exactly what we're seeing yep so um no, I, yeah i, I mean this again is, it's, it's getting a it's, little silly. It is. It is. And again, it's context, right? And did did uh, Alu laugh it off at the time? Right. Uh, did he play along? I mean, and, you know, I don't, again, I wasn't there. I can't believe that the team would have allowed something like that to happen uh, right. if it was Ill, ill-natured. Ill um, but again, he spent, I mean, the guy spent a, a cup of coffee in the NHL. Um, and you know, I don't know, All right. but yeah, so there, there's a, that's developing news, which leads into a, a topic that you wanted to, uh, you wanted to talk about, which I think was big coming out of the NHL. So I'll let you, uh, lead off with, uh, yeah, uh, the I mean, transition. yeah, we both kind of, um, uh, it was brought to our attention just earlier today. Uh, the San Jose Sharks fired head coach, Peter DeBoer, DeBoer. Now, you know, this is um, as uh, the source by ESPN, um, who goes on in the article to state that um, this was a complete hockey-related decision based on the team's on-ice performance, and it had nothing to do uh, with Bettman's uh, coming out on Monday um, with this video re- uh, related to how the league won't tolerate abusive coaches. So it isn't, has, isn't that there's hilarious? No correlation. Yeah, isn't that hilarious though? They had to bend over backwards. Like I, I've seen that in a couple of different sources. Right. They bent over backwards to say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! This has nothing to do." I know. With I know. Every Everyone's being fired. Yeah. It's crazy. It's now, crazy. the other thing is, uh, which which kind of caught my eye was that the team also let go of assistant coach Dave Barr, Steve Spot, and goalie coach Johan Hedberg. Yep. Speak about cleaning uh, cleaning up a little bit. Yeah. Now. We go back to, you know, uh, when when we had the broadcast about the Babcock firing, and I think I went on my little preamble about, uh, you know, how what makes a business decision, right, and and what is going through the heads of the owners. I think this is a strong indication of where the head is at for the owners of this team. They are not fooling around. They they just they want to move forward. They just, and I think as you mentioned, Scotty, you know, um, head coaches are always on the, you know, the first one's kind of the go and, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're hired, hired to be fired. To be I fired. think you, you said, yep. so, um, but I think when you see a situation like this, where you have a full sweeping type of move where the head coach assistant and two assistant coaches and a goalie coach are let go, that's, a, that's a major statement. And that says that an owner stepping up and saying, you know what, we're just not, I'm not, taking this anymore everyone's been put on you know full alert uh and and stuff is going to change real quick so i think based on what the assets are that that team has and based on where they are right now um i think it's gonna it's a it's a perfect wake-up call unfortunate that it's at the expense of four people's careers um but at the same time i think you're gonna see a big on ice difference real quick over there so um so it's interesting uh, yeah go ahead uh, it's interesting um so i'm just reading i'm I'm taking a look at some statistics um they went on the road for four games lost all four uh only got one point uh in a shootout lost to carolina um and i want to say it was uh they had uh winless streaks of four games and five games twice so right. already two five game losing streaks. Uh, they were the last one. They were outscored twenty three to seven uh, right. during that five game losing streak. Um, this team, this team should yeah. absolutely be nowhere near a minus twenty five goal differential. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, what the payroll that they have, uh, the talent yeah. that they have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The more you look at the stats on this team, the more you start to think that this is a validated move. This is, oh, yeah. you know, you can validate yeah. this move. Yep, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the other thing, too, to, to look, think about here is um, their 0.485 points percentage. It's fourth lowest in the conference, right? So th- just in the conference, like, what are they going to do? Um, th- they're, they're near the, the bottom. And an owner and a GM with the roster that, that you're putting on the ice, um, you know, you can't afford that. The, the team has the fourth worst save percentage, so hence the goalie coach, right? Uh, they've allowed the second most goals of 113. They average 12.6 penalty minutes per game, which leads the NHL. So clearly the coaching staff is not doesn't have their hands um, around the team, uh, can't, uh, can't put discipline, um, can't imprint discipline on the yeah. players. Um, and clearly whatever defensive scheme they think they have uh, isn't working. And, uh, you know, one of the things, too, with the with that goal differential, especially the one I pointed out on that five game streak, um, you know, I'd be willing to bet San Jose probably is up near the top of the league in hits. And it was an interesting um, concept uh, that head coach Mike Sullivan of the Penguins uh, said. So his team is all about puck possession and speed. And and a lot of teams in the NHL have adopted that. But he said whenever a team leads uh, the other team in hits, it's because they don't have the puck. And when you're right. being outscored by that type of a margin, right. 23 to 7, you don't have the puck. The top uh, 20 players on this team, the top 20 point producing players on the San Jose Sharks, only two are not in uh, a negative plus minus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Brett, Brett Burns. Just, yeah. He's, he's a minus 21. Yeah. That's a system issue. That's a system issue. Uh, clearly, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, apple was rotten all the way to the core. Um, and it's time for a change. You know, that's a team that likely tuned out the coaching staff and really yeah. you fire the head coach, uh, you yeah. promote the assistant. Well, if the assistant coach is tuned out, uh, you know, wh- where do you go from there? Yeah. Um, so clearly something needed to happen. Uh, coaches are easy, the easiest uh, pieces to get rid of on a team. Uh, yeah. They're always the first. Um, right. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but it's just, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. Um, Interesting, which leads right into, uh, you know, just following up on another story, obviously from um, uh, a couple days ago, which is um, uh, the other day, which is Jim Montgomery being being, uh, let go from the Dallas Stars. Um, Now, this was a little bit more of a situation where it was related to code of conduct. Well, however, maybe. yeah, yeah. However, there's no details being released. Right. So I think it's a little unfair for the media or for a team or even for the NHL to kind of tag a guy to a code of conduct story or, or reason and then not give it and let the guy go. I'd rather not say anything or say everything. Either it's bad or it's not. And if it's not, then don't smear them with a code of contact and let everyone's mind go racing. And then, you know what? Then it becomes a, a even bigger of a topic when this guy's trying to get find another job for himself. Yep. Yep. I mean, now he's known as a guy who was fired for code of conduct. Con- <clears throat> Excuse me. Code of conduct. But no one knows what it is. Right. Why not just say and he's been released from the team? They said, um, uh, so... The, the team uh, said a statement. It was that he was guilty of a material act of unprofessionalism. Um, nothing related to the players on the ice. Nothing to do with any player past or present with the Stars or any other organization. No criminal activity. Um, but, like, what, is, what does that mean? Like, that just lets the it mind anything. wander. It just lets the mind wander, right? I, like, that's exactly what I was going to say. Your mind runs wild, and all it does is it goes into a negative place, especially when this guy's trying to pursue another job. So, I mean, was it was it drugs? Was it you know what was it? You know, like you know, we're, we're going to get into um, the next story, which is which is the code of conduct uh, policy that Gary Bemman um, you know released uh, the other day and reviewed. But and and I kind of commend them for for 
embracing the situation and addressing it in, in the time manner that they did. However, I think this is a perfect example of them kind of fumbling with some loose ends of things that aren't in place yet. Policies and procedures that are not in place. And I think this was a, a PR, a little uh, PR faux pas. It was just a uh, poorly handled and... Uh, and and it's going to be at the expense of, of uh, Montgomery's uh, career, and uh, that's that's a shame. And you know, NHL isn't uh, isn't an organization that's been known to, to kind of reverse course on something. Once it's out there, that's they they stick to it, and that's it. They, you're not going to get an apology. So, um, unfortunate. Hey, listen, I'm not defending the guy. The guy might have done something terrible, but then come out and say he did something terrible. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't don't leave us hanging. Don't leave everyone hanging and this guy hanging. If it isn't, maybe it wasn't terrible. Maybe you just just crossed the borderline of a, of the code of conduct, and now you're going to fire him because of it. But then not say what it is. I mean, it's that's not a good practice. No, I I agree. I agree. And and what I mean, yeah, it, you've got to release something. You've got to say something right. uh, about what happened. Right. Um. Once again, for those on Periscope, feel free to uh, jump in, throw a comment. Um, let's get to the next story. December 9th, two days ago, Gary Bettman uh, put out a 20-minute video through the uh, NHL YouTube app, uh, YouTube channel, I should say. And uh, it was on the changes coming to the NHL and hockey culture, specifically related to the code of conduct um, that they're going to embrace and enforce related directly to the recent um, firings, firings of head coaches and uh, that's been based on their conduct. So as I just stated before, I'll reiterate, I, I think I, I kind of commend them for, for addressing it as quickly as they have. Um, I, I look at this and the way he, he presented this, and if uh, you, you watch the video, I, I presume, right? Yep, yep. yep. Watch the video the way, with the transcript, yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of ironic that, um, you know, today for the company I work for, there's an annual uh, requirement. It, it's it's just mandatory that every employee of, of uh, my company and any large company, medium to large size or even small companies, uh, go through um, harassment training or harassment seminar. It's now an annual requirement. It used to be, I don't think, not annually, but now it is. Um, and I sat there for an hour and a half and listened. Um, I've been to a course like this before, and so I knew what to expect, pretty much the same stuff. But then I, you know, came home, watched the Bettman video again, and it was like the exact same thing. So it's, it's good that they're reiterating. It's not like he came out and said anything new. This is stuff that a lot of corporations uh, or corporate ent entities are following as far as policies and procedures on harassment and, and harassment training as put forth by any, any well-trained HR department within a company. So it's good that they came out, but I, all, what I do like, and I think I mentioned it when we were talking about the Babcock in, incident some broadcasts ago, is that they're going to put a hotline in. I think it's a good first step. I think it's a good first step because he did specifically mention and he enforced it a couple times that it, anyone can call in to this um, hotline anonymously, which obviously will help and it will be things will be addressed in a timely manner. Um, I think... You know, I think it's a good first step. Do I think it's going to, you know, eliminate some things? Mm, time will tell. We'll see. I, but I think it was, I, it was interesting, too, and, and we talked about this in, in one of the previous broadcasts was, um, you know, what about if, if the coach or if the player doesn't like the way the coach looked at me after I took a double yeah. penalty? Well, that, you know, that, and and uh, so, so Bettman made it a point to say, hey, you know, every coach – not, you know, players might not look ev like every coach's style. Um, right. So it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, there's going to have to be some standardized list or some some way that they evaluate these things. Uh, right. Because, you know, um, are players going to be able to, to call up the hotline and say, Coach, bag skated us. There were no pucks. He just made us do laps, well, you know, and, and or something along those lines, you know. You know, um, I've been thinking about this since, since we first talked about it with the Babcock incident. And I think one way to do this is that every – every the league should have every team appoint one person from the organization 
to then to to be the sort of the um, ambassador, the HR ambassador, I guess, if you will, uh, for that team. And it should be someone that's already part of the organization. And that person should be sent to one training session with all the other, other representatives from all the other teams. They should all go through the training. And that, and that way, you have one person on site that the NHL knows has been trained, who's present for everything. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that, that works so well with officials, right? I mean, you know, people don't even know what goaltender interference is really anymore. So, I, I mean, I get your point. Um, I, I think they're going to have to codify it, which, uh, to me, that's kind of dangerous, uh, especially, you know, if you say, well, if so-and-so does this, then this, right? You know, I, I think they're going to have to take a look at, at a bunch of things like context, they're going to, have to take a look at what was the intent, those types of things. Um, certainly, you know, as Bettman said, hey, there's a line that, that isn't crossed. You don't put your hands on a on a right. player. Uh, you don't use, uh, you know, ethnic or racial slurs. Uh, you know, those types of things. But I mean, these are grown men who, you know, even if it's an over the air broadcast on NBC, uh, if they screw up, you're going to hear them curse, right? So it's, uh, you know, I think it's all about intent. And and again, for me being um uh, prior military uh going through boot camp man i got screamed at on a daily basis of course you know and it's, it's but it was I'm context, talking more from right? a matter of uh, and i agree with you but i'm talking more from a matter of reference point of reference right if yeah. someone if right now if you look at a team and you were to kind of give someone 20 questions on on uh, harassment training or 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 any hr related issues or liability within a team you know i bet you almost everyone would, would do poorly Right. Sure. But if you have one person who goes through a, a training session, one representative who's already part of the organization, right, and goes to that a, a central training put forth by the NHL as as an effort that's attached to this code of conduct, this new code of conduct, right? Yeah. Yep. Be, this is we're talking about minimal effort on the NHL's part to have a big payoff. This could this could be effective. And then now you have someone who's present within each organization and at least one person and everybody within that organization would know who that person was. Now the coach can say, you know what, the coach could be thinking about something about how to move forth with maybe a certain training method, mental, it could be mental or physical and say, and now refer to that one person because he doesn't know. Is this something that I can do? I can't do. Is this something I can say or can't say? I'm not saying that the, that it's going to be referenced all the time, but at least to someone there, if it does pop up, I, yeah. I don't know. Listen, I'm trying to figure out the best solution for everybody here, and yeah. at least it'll, you know. I, I you know, I think uh, I think it's it's incumbent upon the players' association, the coaches' association, to really kind of kind of hash this out and and well, he touched uh, on that. Yeah, really, just really just define define expectations, right? So uh, at the end of the day, you treat people with respect. Um, and these are grown men. So again, being prior military and and having to, to lead people, there's two types of people, right? Um, there's the first kind that if you yell at them, they're not going to care. So you can yell at them all you want, and right. they're just not going to change, right? And there's the second kind um, that you don't need to yell at them because they already feel bad enough themselves right. um, that that you don't need to really say anything. And so both those situations, there's no reason to yell. There's no reason to get violent. There's no reason to do anything like that. So, you know, there's, you know, NHL coaches nowadays, uh, they, they have, you know, psychology degrees. They, they come in, they, they've studied uh, how to motivate uh, players. I mean, they go give these motivational uh, speeches to organizations to talk about how they've, how they've gotten their players to play. So, um, you know, I, I think right now uh, there's going to be more stuff that comes out. Yeah. But honestly, I think we're we're seeing a lot coming from the old guard. Um, right. We're seeing a lot coming from from coaches that have been around for a long time. And I think as those guys move out of the league, I think it's going to be less. I think it's going to be less. And I really think we're not going to see a lot of this past maybe the next six months. I really think it's going to go away. Yeah. Um, you're just not going to. Batman mentioned that also, and I think the attorney that was sitting to Batman's right mention that also that for the most part everything has been good and yeah. you know what these are isolated instances and we don't really no one you know i think he was speaking on behalf of, of most of the nhl um, brass and saying that they don't sure. expect many things to be popping up and yeah. i i would tend to agree with him on that and i, I yeah. think that uh this is going to run its course people are going to get it out of their system and then you're not going to see it for for a while 
Yeah, I, I mean, and the thing is, everybody, at some point in time, you need to grow up. You need to be a man, get a tough skin. Um, at work, we use uh, we use curse words like they're like it's punctuation, like it's filler in a sentence. Um, but nobody, you know, it's just the, it's the lingo. It's the way that that um, that we right. talk to each other. Um, but again, you know, there's certain lines to be drawn. Like if a guy, uh, you know, goes offsides um, on a play, the coach can't just walk down the bench and kick the dude in the back of the head, right? Like it, right. you just can't do that. Right. Um, now the can thing that I did him? like. Yeah, well, no, obviously not. Uh, the right. thing that I did like about, but he can take away his ice time, right? right. So there's other ways of doing it. Well, right? that's a retaliation thing. Yeah, that's a. Well, no. So so coaches shorten benches all the time and they will bench guys for for poor performance, right? right. And then the next time, maybe they scratch them. I mean, there's, there's other ways without being physical. Um, right. And again, these are motivated athletes who they don't, they don't want to sit, right? They want to get on the ice. So, uh, but the other thing that, that I really liked uh, that Bettman said is if there's any team that knows of uh, of any kind of, of actions and doesn't inform the league, that the team is going to be uh, held accountable for that yeah. as well. So, again, I, I think uh, opening, being able to open the dialogue, being able to um, – uh, provide that avenue for reporting, and they said it can it can be reported by anybody. Uh, I think it's just as you said, it's a good first step. Uh, I just don't think that there's going to be a lot um, after maybe say the next six months. Um, right. Now, that's just in the NHL. There are obviously reports coming out of other leagues um, uh, that uh, are a lot different, and those leagues because they don't get the exposure that the NHL does because they aren't making the kind of money that the NHL does. Um, they're not, those stories are not as, uh, you know, as well told or as well circulated. So what I'm, what I would hope is that the NHL's approach uh, would be picked up by other leagues um, uh, and, and uh, implemented in some format. Um, because again, you know, you have stories of players who just take it uh, yeah. because they don't want their career to be in jeopardy. Correct. And that's before they get to the NHL. And yeah. so you don't want a player broken um, because they're ashamed of something that happened. Uh, and then that affects their ability to get to the NHL. And, you know, they don't say anything or whatever the case may be. So uh, my hope is that, again, that they they take this, you know, as you said, this good first step, uh, that other leagues adopt it and that, uh, you know, the mess gets cleaned up uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Very good. Um, I think as far as key stories that are, uh, you know, on the forefront of the sport, um, I think we, we pretty much nailed, nailed a few there. Um, anything you have before we move forward? No, I mean, so the, uh, well, actually I shouldn't say that. It's just real quick. So, um, there was a cap salary cap predictions. Mm-hmm. And uh, so obviously, you know, the Board of Governors uh, met and uh, uh, last year, Gary Bettman predicted $83 million salary cap. And so teams kind of looked to spend to that level. Mm -hmm. um, it actually ended up at uh, 81 and a half. Um, that number wasn't uh, that number didn't didn't become solid until June. Um, right. And so that affected uh, some contract negotiations. So. Uh, and, and also affected what teams could do. So it's interesting this year, um, Bettman did not come out with a number. Um, and he said, you know, obviously they still have to talk with the players. Um, it's, and it's interesting uh, because um, with, the, with a possible upcoming lockout uh, slash strike uh, that the players may uh, agree to up the um, – uh, up the um, uh, amount that they're that are the ceiling that the the player association is willing to go go to. So uh, because of uh, the con the way the contracts were structured, there's lower mm -hmm. cash payouts uh, next season. So players yeah. did that. Uh, they wanted to front load because they thought, hey, I need to get my money while uh, while I can. Right. So uh, lower escrow, uh, which means that the uh, NHL Players Association might be willing to raise the ceiling. Uh, by more than just uh, a point and uh, uh, 1.15%, which is right. what ended up happening uh, this season. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how that how that goes. Uh, the only other thing uh, I want to bring up is um, the World Cup of Hockey 
yes. that was announced that's not going to be played. Um, uh, they just said they don't have enough time to organize something like that. Uh, they said they're going to try and maybe get an all-star game, which I gotta be honest with you, all-star games to me nowadays, uh, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, they're exciting for the city they're in, but I think they're, I, I just don't like watching them. Um, so we'll, we'll see how they, we'll see how they play that out. Um, to me, if you're going to give the players a break, you give them a break. Uh, you yeah. give the superstars time off. You let them recuperate for the second part of the season, the most important part, which is the run to the playoffs. Um, but you don't, uh, you don't risk injury, um, and you don't. Uh, it's just, who are you selling the sport to? I mean, yeah. you're not doing much to expand it. Why bother putting an All Star game? Uh, you know, when you're not going to attract anybody new. I mean, they're not doing anything to attract anybody new. Why bother putting the players on the ice with that? But again, that's just me. So, yeah, that's all I got. Those are the only two other things that I thought were interesting coming out of the GM uh, GM meeting. Interesting. Well done, sir. Um, some interesting things here on the uh, schedule for tomorrow, Thursday, December 12th. Uh, we're going to go through the schedule, go through some uh, matchups, some predictions. Uh, we have the Predators at the Sabres tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, who are you liking in that one, sir? Predator Sabres. So, so again, uh, the Sabres have been riding high uh, of late. Um, nice they, win they the other night, huh? Yeah, they've they've not looked bad. Um, Nashville's kind of uh, you know they're they're definitely feeling the effects of of losing goaltending and and scoring. And so you know I, I really think uh, I'm going to go with the Sabres on this one. Um, if they could play like they played the other night. And play again, you know, play that way, and just looking strong. Um, I'm going to agree with you. I mean, they, they just look tenacious. They look good. I they, they look like a solid team. Um, can they continue it? Can they sustain it? Uh, I think that's yet to be proven. However, I think maybe they can string a couple together. So I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. I'll go with the Sabres over the Preds. Um, Bruins at Lightning. So, you know, it's interesting, these teams that have been going uh, going in cycles. Uh, so Boston's now lost two in a row. Uh, and uh, Tampa, uh, again, I'm not sure what to expect with them. If I was uh, – if there was another coach, in my opinion, that was on the hot seat, it would be John Cooper. And I say that having uh, covered the guy here uh, in Virginia with the Admirals when they went on their uh, – 28 game winning streak, won the Calder Cup. I mean, the guys won at every level, uh, but there just seems to be something uh, that just isn't working right in Tampa anymore. Uh, last year, they <laughs> they should have just destroyed opponents uh, the way they did in the regular season and just couldn't. Um, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals one year, just couldn't get over the hump. And so uh, something's got to change, or I think the coaching staff is going to change in Tampa. Um, so with that being said, um, I think Boston's going to bounce back. I think it's, Boston's going to win that game, but I think it's going to go to overtime. I think with Bergeron coming up and the lines getting mixed uh, mixed up again, and things getting you know chemistry getting the pot getting stirred, I think they're a little uh, off balance. So the game is in. Tampa, Tampa Bay. So, who did you take? Uh, I picked. I took Boston. Flip a coin, dude. I know. I think. I think uh, Tampa makes a stand. Tampa Bay makes a stand at home. They get a little pissed off, and they they uh, they uh, make some lightning strike tomorrow. I'll go with Tampa Bay. Okay. Islanders, Panthers. Islanders at Panthers. Now, I just want to mention before we get into predictions. Yeah. Okay. That this Islanders team is one of the um, uh, best Islander teams to hit 20 games in the fewest amount of games. They have, uh, I'm sorry, 20 wins in the fewest amount of games. They have 20 wins in 29 games. If you look at the other team that's been kind of held within the media as a powerhouse being Boston, they have also 20 wins, but in 31 games. Right? So, I don't know. Who's the better team? 
The team who gets 20 wins in 29 games or the team who gets 20 wins in 31 games? Oh, well, I mean, you know, right now we're, we're not really talking about, you know, we're not really talking about rankings. And again, that, I know, I know. I just want to throw it out there. That stuff will flush. No, I mean, it's a good, it's, it's a good, um, just wanted to throw it out. It's there. a good point. It's a good point. But again, it's, we're now talking about what have you done for me lately? Right. Yeah. No, I hear and, you. Uh, and, and so, you know, the Islanders are five, four and one in their last 10. Um, Florida is five, five and zero oh in their last 10. So you have yeah. two teams that are kind of trucking along, um, you know, obviously Florida is uh, uh, trailing um, uh, the Islanders uh, in, in the points uh, category uh, by uh, by seven points. But, you know, Florida's Florida's uh, a pretty steady team. They have been for the past couple of seasons. They've got some talent. So uh, I, I'm going to give it to the Islanders on this one. But I think it's going to be a hard fought game. Um, you know, Florida is nine, five and two at home. The Islanders are eight, five and one away. And uh you know, I, I just think it's going to be a good, uh, good, evenly matched team. You know, the the Florida fans uh, can get loud, and uh, I just I think it'll be a good game. But I think ultimately, the Islanders are going to pull it out. Yeah, I I think after the last game, um, you know, the Islanders look strong. Um, it was an away game. Um, I think maybe they found a little bit more momentum. This has been, a, they've had a, a rough last few weeks with a lot of away games. Um, the players have mentioned that it's been a tough rhythm going from coast to coast and just finding that ebb and flow. But I think, uh, they're back on, they've, they're back on the East coast and they have been for a little bit. And I think, um, that they're going to feel strong. They're going to play well. Um, I see this being a regulation win for the Islanders. Okay. Blue Jackets and Penguins. So the game's in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, uh, the last time these two teams uh, met, uh, Columbus got the upper hand. Um, Columbus is just not a good team. Um, yeah. I mean, they're 4 6 and 0 in their last 10. Um, they're 5 and, uh, I'm sorry, let me, uh, let me go back to that. Yeah, 4 6 0. They're 4 6 and 3 and uh, away from home. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. There's been a bit of a goaltender controversy in Pittsburgh uh, between Matt Murray, who uh, entered the season as a starter, and Tristan Jari, who just last night set the Penguins, the Penguins uh, shutout record um, for, for a goaltender. Uh, he's got he leads the league or at least going into last night's game, led the league in, in uh, all important statistical goaltender categories. Um, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see Jari played last night. Uh, will they go back to Matt Murray? And uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, Pittsburgh just last night didn't look good. I think they're going to rebound. I think they're going to take it to Columbus, especially with the way that the last game turned out. And so I'm going to go with Pittsburgh um, uh, taking it over uh, Columbus. Yeah, I, I can't go against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, I, especially at a, with a team like Columbus. Uh, no matter how you slice it, I just – don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, just out of curiosity, I think the Penguins lead or one of the top teams in the league as far as attendance, correct? So they have a, uh, I don't know, it's seasons worth of consecutive sellouts. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that, yeah. that, that place is, uh, that place might as well be a mausoleum. They can fill it up and it sounds empty. Uh, it, it's just crazy. And the other thing, too, is sellout. Uh, the way that they're allowed to calculate that is number of tickets distributed. So uh, there's a lot of fan forums out there. And you can really find this on a bunch of teams where they claim the game is a sellout, but it's because they donated like 100 tickets to a school district. Right. Uh, you know, things like right. that. So, yeah. Um, you know, uh, and the other thing, too, in Pittsburgh, uh, believe it or not, is um, uh, resale. So you want to you want to get a good gate idea of how well a team is doing with within the fan base. Um, take a look at the ticket prices on like Ticketmaster, uh, the resale value. Um, there are seats down by the glass that are people are trying to just give away for the most part, and and people still aren't buying them. So um, you know that's what's one other factor uh, if you want to know how a team is doing in the mind of its fans. Is, you know, go on to sites like that StubHub and just see how much tickets are how many are available. Uh, and and see how much they're going for. Yeah. So, Jets at Red Wings. Did you see Line A's goal the other night? The one where he uh, 
was dished a pass and split the defense, went right up the middle, and then uh, had a beautiful. <coughs> I mean, it, it's you know, <laughs> this freaking guy. I tell you, in fantasy last year, or I think, or it was two years ago. I forget if it was last year. I think he was my number one pick, and he was. That was he just was like abysmal the whole year. And I think that was the year where he's being accused of just sitting up playing Fortnite all, all every night. Yeah. I mean, the guy just had a terrible year. Yep. Um, and now, obviously, he snaps out of it. Yep. But um, he's looking. He looked. He looked. He looked strong. So uh, well, we, they had a good win. Yeah, and, and we talked about Winnipeg um, uh, having. Um, you know, the, the two of the best lines in uh, fantasy uh, projections for the remainder of the year. So, yeah. you know, um, I think that uh, that's that's kind of a – I wouldn't want to be Detroit. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah, I think it's it's in Detroit. I don't know how much that's going to play a role, but I just the Jets are just going to be too overwhelming. And it's – you know, it's a shame. The Red Wings, you look at their roster, and they sh- they just shouldn't be this bad. They just sh- – I mean, they, they should be maybe not – I don't know. I just don't see when you look at the roster. I just don't see them being this bad. But um, I, I don't quite know what what the source of that is. But the Jets just look way too strong. So I'm taking the Jets. Golden Knights at the Blues. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Vegas. Flurry just uh, rejoined the team. Played a good game um, recently, and uh, I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick Vegas. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'll go with uh, Blues at home. Oilers at the Wild. Um, so the Oilers. Uh, so Minnesota again is they're they're just not looking good this year. Um, they're uh, they're they're six one and three in their last ten, uh, as opposed to Edmonton, uh, which is four five and one in their last ten. So clearly there's some things going on there. Their goal differential dropped. They're down to Edmonton is down to a plus one. Uh, I think that these two teams are going to duke it out as a you know not good teams that are, are teams that are facing each other, not good times, but I'm going to say Edmonton's going to pull it out. Gotcha. I'm going to uh, agree with you on that. I'll go with Oilers. Maple Leafs at the flames. Um, I, I think the, the Leafs are going to, I think the Leafs are going to pull that one out. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just a feeling I have Calgary's in minus seven. Uh, Calgary is on a six game winning streak. Yes. But I think Toronto is uh, there. They're, Toronto's won two in a row. I think they they've shaken off. Some of the demons. Uh, so I'm going to say Toronto ends the Calgary win streak. Calgary's not a close trip. Calgary's not close to anything. Yeah. Uh, Calgary's at home. Maple Leafs uh, having a hard enough time. Uh, and now that they have to travel across the continent, um, I'm going to take the Flames at home. Okay. All right. Blackhawks at Coyotes. Uh, Arizona over Chicago. I would agree with it's you a, on that. It's a home game. I think they're going to take it. Yeah. Hur- Hurricanes at Canucks. Uh, Hurricanes. Uh, I definitely think the Canes are they're a hot team. They're uh, they're they trending are. in the right direction. They're steady. I think her, uh, Carolina's going to pull that one out. Bechnikov, uh, Aho, Teravainen. Yep. They, they got a scary roster, man. They, yep. they got a scary attack. Good goaltending. I think they're I think they're definitely a, a good team. Yeah. As an Islanders uh, as an Islanders guy, they they scare me again this year. They they really shellacked us last year in the playoffs. They they're scaring me right now. So yep. um, yeah, Kings at Ducks. Uh, I think again, John Gibson's going to make the difference. Um, LA has just looked horrible. Uh, I, they, they've got a lot of problems there. I'm going to go with Anaheim, despite them not really having a lot of offense. I'm going to go with Anaheim. I agree with you. Uh, Rangers sharks. At so, the sharks. I said it before and I'll yes. say it again. Uh, I think it's going to be a wake up call. I think the sharks are going to come out with adrenaline and I think they're going to take the, uh, I think they're going to take that over the Rangers. Last time I disagree with you this time. I'm going to agree with you. Uh, Mostly because of the fact that the Sharks have a lot more firepower, um, I believe. I think they they have a lot more potential uh, to pull something like that off. So I'm going to go yep. with the Sharks. It's in San Jose. Yep. Uh, that wraps it up, man. All right. Excellent. I thank you, uh, for, and also for everyone who joined us for the broadcast this evening. We'll be back this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but thank you to everyone for joining us this evening, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon yep be back sunday and join us and definitely throw uh throw your comments at us as we're uh, going through take care Thanks. thanks bye